Hello, welcome to Dentistry and You. I'm your host, Dr. Casebolt. Tonight, I want to talk about a very, very important aspect of dental care, the psychology of dentistry. Every one of us, when we approach dentistry, from the standpoint of a patient, or maybe the standpoint of being the doctor providing the dental care, we are approaching the psychology of the patient. We have to deal with patients because patients are what the whole procedure of dentistry is about. With me tonight is Dr. Alan Gleros from the University of Missouri Kansas City School of Dentistry. Right. Alan, I appreciate you coming <laughs> down to Dentistry and you, my segment and uh, the show Kansas City Alive. And I, I really do appreciate it. I know it was a last minute thing and we rushed down here and the roads were terrible. Everything happened at once, but we got down here. And again, I really appreciate uh, very much your coming well, down. Well, I'm delighted to be here tonight. Super. Uh, there's so many things that involve the psychology of dentistry. Uh, we are dealing with people, we're dealing with mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. we're dealing with what their thoughts are and what they're thinking about when they go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the very first time, when a 51-year-old individual comes to me for the very first time for their dentistry, it's like a child. What I want to talk about is what should we do as dentists and what should patients do as patients when they're coming to that dental appointment for the very first time in pain. Okay. Well, um, usually if someone's coming to you for the first time and in pain, that probably means that they've uh, really neglected their dental care for a yes. long, long time. And unfortunately, uh, what that means is they're probably going to need a whole bunch of fairly uncomfortable and lengthy procedures. Uh, the reason they probably didn't come in in the first place is that they were probably pretty frightened and scared of dentists to begin with. And I suspect that comes from a, a, a pretty old belief that when you go to a dentist, what you're going to get is someone poking around your mouth and it's really going to hurt and you're going to be incredibly uncomfortable and it's just going to be an overall horrible experience. Uh, dentistry as it's practiced today is, uh, is not at all like that kind of stereotype. Dentists really know how to use medications. They've been trained in interpersonal skills for dealing with patients who are feeling uncomfortable or feeling scared and anxious. And they know how to put people at ease and know how to make the procedures pleasant. Right. That's important because um, I recall as a child, and I was very fortunate because my parents could afford good dentistry, and, and uh, I, I can't really say that I ever had a negative uh, experience in a dental chair, although I got my share of dental fillings. I have a filling in every tooth. I hate to admit that, but it's really true. And I, I'm sure that there was probably some uh, concern and upset on my part at the time I was having the procedure done. As a dentist, um, I know what's involved with removing an old filling or mm -hmm. cutting a uh, tooth structure to put a filling in. And it doesn't bother me very much. But it, but it is important to realize that a lot of patients are extremely apprehensive about this. Uh, when they go in for dental treatment, um, positive attitude is really important. They know or should know that the dentist is not going to hurt them, sure. that they're going to use every possible thing at, at, at their disposal to make their dental uh, procedure and their appointment comfortable. I guess the next question I might ask is, what would you suggest to our patients out there, our people out in TV land that are watching this, uh, what can we suggest uh, to them to either suggest to themselves or to their children or to the loved ones that are going to receive dental care, what can they do to prepare themselves and make that dental visit very comfortable? Sure. Well, for the folks who have never been into a dentist for the first time, it's likely that they learned that kind of fear from someone in their family might have been a parent, a relative, a brother, or a sister. And, uh, you know, you really can't undo your past, so what you really have to do is to find a dentist who is a comfortable dealing with someone who's got a lot of fears. And very often these kinds of dentists will take the time, show you around the office, right. introduce you to the staff, show you the, the uh, place where they do uh, procedures, uh, really try and get you to feel very accustomed to the uh, location. And then they'll gradually uh, sort of bring you into the procedures. They'll do little things, make it real easy, uh, the idea is not to make it like a, a, a sink or swim operation right. for them, but rather to make the patient feel just as comfortable as they possibly can. 
Now, you know, for an adult uh, who's got that kind of fear, finding that kind of dentist will be a real help. But what we can do as parents is to send our kids to a dentist on a regular basis. And uh, <clears throat> again, I, you know, I think what you're going to find is that uh, the kind of care that's being provided these days is really quite good. And so the kids will come away thinking it's no big deal. It's kind of like going to see the pediatrician. Mm. And uh, yeah, occasionally it might be a little uncomfortable. I mean, you know, pediatricians give you shots. And exactly. that's sometimes not so great. But overall, it's no big deal. And uh, the kids will just get real used to it. You know, I have a seven-year-old son, and uh, we've been taking him on a regular basis, and he just has no problems at all about going to the dentist. Uh, unfortunately, his his uh, teeth are a lot bigger than his mouth is, so that you know, happens to a lot of kids. Oh yeah, <laughs> but he's going to need orthodontics eventually, yes. and uh, to prepare him for that, we need we needed to pull a couple of his teeth. Um, and he doesn't like when that happens, but he doesn't feel afraid of it. He knows that the uh, dentist will take very good care of him, uh, that he'll be treated well. And uh, you know, it's like, I, if I have to do it, I will. He'd prefer not to have that done, right. of course, and I don't blame him. But still, it's no problem for him. So I think that a parent who can send their kid off um, and just do it on a regular basis, and if the parent's feeling kind of anxious about it, well, the best thing they can do is sort of shut up and just let the kid have as good an experience as possible. Sometimes and let I think the, they have better attitudes than the parents. Well, I think you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once the, you know, the kid has a series of good experiences, then it'll be easy from that point on. You know, I think that's wonderful. And I've always advocated in my show over the last year how important attitudes are. Attitudes are so very, very important because they uh, parents foster attitudes in children. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, children uh, learn from their parents. They learn from their peers. They learn from all of the other adults that are in their life. Mm -hmm. And that's so very, very important. And I think for dental care, and as a dentist, I'm going to concentrate on that. Sure. I, uh, physicians have the things that they concentrate on, but as a dentist, I, I would concentrate on dental care. Mm -hmm. And it's so very, very important to foster a good attitude uh, with our children. Right. Um, I would also invite the people out there uh, who are watching our show, uh, Dr. Glaros and myself, Dr. Casebolt, would very, very, very much entertain your uh, questions. You can call us. There is a uh, phone call uh, number. You can call us at the number that appears at the bottom of your screen. We would love to hear from you. Uh, we can talk to you here live on uh, Kansas City Alive. And again, uh, I can't say how very important your phone calls will be to us. You know, over the years, uh, I deal with patients young and old. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, I get an older patient that has not come in for dental care, and they might be... 50 years old, 60 years old. Many, many years have passed and they've not received any kind of dental care whatsoever. And uh, they might have problems. Again, they might not. But they have apprehensions about dentistry. I think what is important, I guess what I'd like you to comment on, is not just so much our young uh, children out there, our young adults, maybe so much, but some of the older uh, or more mature individuals that have apprehensions about dentistry. What can, we, what can we tell them? What should they feel? What should they expect when they go to the dental office? Let's say after 10 years of neglect. Gosh, after 10 years the of neglect. The $10 million dollar yeah, question, right. sorry. <laughs> well, you know, uh, 10 years is a long time not to go without yes. any kind of dental care. And, uh, they are concerned because they have all sorts of ideas about what might be wrong with their teeth, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, again, my guess is, except for the people who really can't afford care, and that's a real problem for a lot of folks, um, but you know, taking that group aside, if you haven't been for a long time, I suspect that you've been kind of scared about going, or maybe you're new to uh, an area and you just really haven't had the chance to get around to find someone. Um, if you're having a lot of pain, uh, it may be something that's uh, a, a pain that's going to just go away once this 
uh, immediate problems taken care of, or you know, for some people, they're going to experience chronic pain. Maybe they have some uh, arthritis in the temporomandibular joint. Um, you know, maybe they're having chronic headaches. Um, and dentists are more and more able uh, to take care of those kinds of patients as well. Um, I guess my advice to those kinds of folks would be just call, make the appointment, show up. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I think that's excellent. I have seen so many patients that haven't been in for 10, 15 years, and uh, I find that the majority of them have a very positive experience after mm -hmm. they've been in. I've, you know, with any new patient uh, that's seen, I try to keep their dental uh, procedures down to a minimum at the first appointment and try to do as much diagnosis as, as possible. I wanted to touch on another factor. Uh, as a dentist, I see this a lot. Um, I don't know how exactly how to approach this, but I'll go ahead and be blunt about okay. it. What the heck, we're on live television. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of dentists that I've talked to experience stress mm -hmm. in, their, in their dental lives when they go to their offices at 8 o'clock in the morning and see their first patients or 9 o'clock, whatever uh, their scheduling is. Um, they see their first couple of patients and they always in, inevitably are exposed to stress. Mm -hmm. The stress that they're exposed to is a stress from a patient that is themselves stressed out. Uh, what can you tell our people at home what they can do to minimize stress that they might exhibit to the dentist in order for the dentist to have a better rapport with themselves okay. and I, with their patient? Sure. I guess I, I would suggest to a patient not to hide it. I yeah. think it, I make it out in the open, let the dentist know where you're at. Uh, tell them that you're feeling uncomfortable because they know what to do and they, they have techniques for dealing with it. I think it really gets to be a problem when someone has some sort of concern and they're afraid to mention it. You know, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, I have this little white spot up here and I don't really want to bother you with it and so they wait and, and maybe that's a serious problem that needs to be addressed. Um, maybe they have a couple of questions that they feel are kind of stupid and they might be embarrassed to ask. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd say ask them anyway um, because you'll get the answer that you're looking for and if that puts your mind at ease, well, that's a good thing to have. I think that's great. Um, again, I think the most important thing is that everybody who comes into the dental office or the dental uh, circumstance or situation to receive treatment um, should get the very, very most that they can possibly get from their dental treatment mm -hmm. uh, because they're paying good money, whether they're paying it through their insurance company. Um, I don't think that's so much an issue. What is important as dental practitioners, we have to provide the very best that we can for the patient right. in their particular situation, uh, whether they're fearful or not. And you know, Alan, we have a telephone call. Please, go ahead. You're on the air. Um, yes, how come some people are afraid to come to the dentist, even at younger ages and older ages? Do you know why that occurs? Well, I guess my, uh, my answer there is that they've learned from someone that uh, going to a dentist is a scary thing to do. Um, uh, kids, for example, learn it from their parents. They don't really learn it from bad, that many bad experiences because they haven't had them. Um, I'm, I suspect there are some older patients, on the other hand, who have had bad experiences with their personal dentists, and uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but I think you need to give uh, uh, the dentistry of today a try, because I think you'll find it much more pleasant and much more enjoyable. You know, I think that's so very important, uh, and I would say this to children. Uh, I can remember eight years ago, no, nine years ago, when I was in dental school, and I had a young child who, um, uh, there were two of them, and they came in, their parent brought them in. And uh, being a neophyte, gosh, I hate that term, but I'll use it, it's been used before. Um, at that time, um, the two children, the little boy uh, came, just marched right into the chair, and he was just happy as can be. We did the whole thing, and it was over. The little girl uh, got very reluctantly, got into the chair, and she looked at me and let out a scream and ran. By the time we chased her down in the, the, the school, and there were you know, all the hallways and everything, mm -hmm. um, I finally got her to calm down, and I asked the question, what's the matter? And the mother didn't know anything. She didn't know what the problem was. And uh, by the time we figured out what was going on, the little boy had told the, the sister 
that she was going to have all her teeth ripped out. <laughs> and I mean, she was absolutely frightened. I mean, she thought here she was in a completely unfamiliar surroundings. Everything was up there. I mean, a little mm -hmm. child, you know, sure. five years old, four years old, I can't remember exactly, but I mean, everything was big and it was up there. Equipment, uh, everything was up there and, and it was a frightening situation mm -hmm. for her. In the 30 seconds that we've got left, what would you tell our young parents out there with young children, what they can do to prepare their children psychologically for their first dental visit? Probably the easiest thing that they can do is to give them honest answers about what they can expect. Uh, tell them that, uh, you know, describe what a dentist visit is like, what they're likely to see, the sounds they're going to hear, maybe some of the smells. Tell them that there's nothing to be terribly frightened of and that the dentist who's going to treat them is going to be kind and gentle. Alan, I think that's wonderful. And again, I, I so much appreciate you coming down Thanks. to Kansas City Alive in my segment, Dentistry and You. And again, I appreciate you very much for watching my segment, Dentistry and You. And I want to tell you to watch Kansas City Alive every night at 6 p.m. here on KCCP Channel 30. Again, thank you and good evening. When you're growing up it's tough enough when emotions are stirred And honesty, it's so hard to see when your vision is blurred Whether you're a boy or a girl, Boys Town has a caring person just a phone call away who will really listen to your problems and help you solve them. Call the Boys Town hotline toll-free, 1-800-448-3000. Here's tonight's prime time lineup on KCCP TV. As we leave, here's another look at the weather or not forecast. Be sure and tune into Wednesday's edition of Kansas City Alive, because Ruth Roden will be here with guitarist Danny Embry on the music scene. Rochelle Kling will begin a two-part series on Just for Kicks. She'll visit with Dr. Daniel Hussar, and they'll talk about medication management today. And Kansas City astrologer Tom Davidson will be here with Star Talk Astrology. He'll take your calls and answer your astrological questions. Be sure to tune in to Kansas City Alive Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thanks for watching. Until then, have a great evening. Good night.